Welcome, brothers and sisters, to our lecture, The Augustinian Recollects in the Philippines, the Province of St. Nicholas of Tolentine, 1621-1998. Bakit po pinili natin ang tema ito, the subtopic, The Province of St. Nicholas of Tolentine? For the simple reason, this year, 2021, the province of St. Nicholas of Tolentine of the Augustinian Recollects is celebrating its fourth centenary foundation. It was founded here in the Philippines, though the legislation was made in Spain in 1621. So allow me to share with you in this lecture the, we might say, the history of the province of St. Nicholas of Tolentine here in the Philippines. Because this province was the one who worked for the evangelization of our ancestors and, they con and the recollects who came here under the province of St. Nicholas of Tolentine continued this work but under the name of St. Ezekiel Moreno province in 1998. So... When did it begin? No? It began on, in, in the month of November of 1621. We remember on June 5, 1621, the Pope Gregory XV elevated no, the province of St. Augustine of the Recollects in Spain into a congregation. That was on June 5, 1621, and it became the Augustinian recollect congregation so when it became a congregation it was given set certain rights and privileges and one of the privileges that was given as a congregation it can divide the congregation into several organizational units called the province that's why from november 19 to november 30 1621 the first Recollect General chapter was held in Madrid, and on November 20, the first Vicar General, Father Jeronimo de la Resurrección, was elected Vicar General. Not only that, on the 23rd of November, 1621, Recording in the, progress. the Augustinian Recollect Congregation with 28 communities in Spain and the Philippines was divided into four provinces, namely, the St. Augustine province in the region of Castile, the Our Lady of the Pillar province in the region of Aragon, Spain, and the province of Blessed Thomas of Villanova in Andalusia in southern Spain. And the only province outside of Spain that was created by this general chapter was the province of St. Nicholas of Tolentine only in the Philippines. In the Philippines, not as a province, it has a peculiar characteristic of a province. That is, in spirit, it is missionary. That's why when it became a province in 1621, no, the first provincial chapter of the province of St. Nicholas of Tolentine was held in Manila in the early of February 1624. The Recollect province plays herself under the patronage of St. Nicholas of Tolentine. In accord with the Vicar General's directive you know, from Madrid, Father Pedro de, Ma de la Madre de Dios presided the provincial chapter held in Manila. Then, in May of 1626, the second provincial chapter held in Manila, the petition that was sent before in 1610 by Padre Pedro de San Fulgencio to Rome asking for greater autonomy for the province of St. Nicholas of Tolentine to the Philippines from Spain due to distance and perhaps their apostolic orientation was finally heard and granted. So, in other words, the second provincial chapter already decided with the, with the approval of Rome that the nature and the orientation of the province is strictly missionary. And that was we might say decided in May of 1626. As a missionary province, no, many of its, uh, we might say, activities were not only limited in the Philippines, they were also active missionary activities outside of the Philippines under the province of St. Nicholas of Tolentine. So let us now give the highlights of how the province contributed 
to the development of the Philippines as a nation and a country that is, we might say, majority of these people are still Catholics. For 377 years, the province of St. Nicholas of Tolentine and its friar missionaries contributed to the evangelization of the islands and temporarily were present in Japan and Guam. And however, during the Philippine Revolution, the province extended its missionary presence in Venezuela, Brazil, in South America. And in the 20th century, the province opens open missions in China and Taiwan. So these are the salient points. No? of the mission territories of the province of St. Nicholas of Tolentine. The Philippines, Luzon besides and we now in selected areas, provinces between 1606 to the present. Japan between 1623 and 1632. Guam 1770 to 1908. And they returned in the 20th century from 1974 to 1989. Saipan at the end of the 18th century. China, was, it was uh, we might say, became an important um, mission for the recollects when seven recollects arriving in Shanghai in 1907 and the Holy See entrusted the region called Kuwaiti in the 1920s. And Taiwan, uh, the mission in Kaohsiung was opened in June of 1963. So these, these are only salient points. No? In Latin America, other, we might say, missions were open like Venezuela, Brazil also part of what is called now Panama, okay? But these two countries, Venezuela and Brazil, were the first two mission territories that the Recollects you know, opened during the Philippine Revolution in 1898. And still the Recollects are present in, are present in those two countries. Now, the contribution to the Philippines was enormous. The Recollect province of San Nicolas of Tolentine. The Agustinian Recollects arrived in the Philippines in 1606, in spite of the fact that the archipelago was already divided in, 15, in 1594 among the religious groups who arrived before the Recollects. Who were they? Who were the re religious missionaries, orders, who arrived before the Recollects? We arrived in 1606, but who were the other four who arrived before us? First were the Agustinians in 1565 with Legaspi. Second, the arrival in, of the Franciscans in 1578. Third, the arrival of the Jesuits, 1581. And fourth, the arrival of the Dominicans in 1587. So that's why when these four religious groups who came before the Recollects, the King of Spain, Philip II, in a royal decree in 1594, ordered the governor general at that time to distribute these four mission missionary orders or groups to the Philippines and give them mission districts. So when we arrived in 1606, the Philippines, the Philippine archipelago were, was, were, was, was already subdivided among the four religious orders who arrived before us. However, no, due to the system called the Patronato Real, no, the king through his governor general gave or allotted areas, mission territories that were not yet evangelized by these four religious orders who came before us. So that's why the, the remaining areas, when we were, when we were given no, these margins no, of mission territories in the Philippines, no, how did our recollect historians describe these areas? First, let us not forget that this Different mission areas assigned to the Recollects were characterized by the following, according to our historian in Rome. First, they were re remote and poor areas to evangelize. Second, the missions were almost bereft of government concern and assistance. Third, the settlements or doctrinas were isolated from each other. And fourth, the mission centers were highly exposed to frequent moral piratical incursions. These difficulties did not prevent the recollects from successfully and painstakingly transforming the missions assigned to them, no? turning them, transforming them into prosperous towns and parishes. So the Augustinian recollects as evangelizers, town builders, and pastors of souls, how did they accomplish their work? 
From 1621 until 1896, the eve of the Philippine Revolution, there were 1,623 Agustin Recollect Friars served as missionaries, pastors, military chaplains, and other capacities. They converted and formed the Filipinos to the Catholic faith and later contributed highly to the formation of the Philippines as the only dominant Catholic nation in Southeast Asia. In 1896, the Agustinian Records took care of 1,249,399 souls in different 203 towns in 20 provinces in the country. By 1898, there were 233 Agustinian Recollects serving either as missionaries or parish priests distributed in the Archdiocese of Manila, the Diocese of Cebu, and the Diocese of Haro. Now, let us now give some highlights. No? How did the Recollects act as missionaries or evangelizers, town builders, and pastors of souls? And these are the following important highlights in the history of the Recollect province of St. Nicholas of Tolentine in the Philippines. When you go to Vigan Ilocosur, you will notice at the plaza, the beautiful plaza of Vigan facing the beautiful, we might say, Cathedral of Vigan. That is the seat of the Archdiocese today of Nueva, Ca of Nueva Segovia. Many do not know that the bell tower, the cathedral, and even the Episcopal Palace were constructed during the time when Arecoleto was Bishop of Nueva Segovia. He was father or Bishop Juan Ruiz de San Agustin. He was Bishop of Nueva Segovia from 1780 to 1796. During his term, he helped with the help of the, uh, with the help of his parishioners, you know, his faithful, help him build this present cathedral. It was called an earthquake baroque church, so it was an earthquake proof church built under the supervision of this Recoleto bishop, you know, Juan Ruiz de San Agustin. You know. And remember, the spirit of working for a church or a cathedral at that time was in the spirit in what in what we Filipinos called the spirit of Bayanihan. All of our churches here during the Spanish period, through the supervision of the recollect missionaries, the people helped build their own church. This is what we call the spirit of Bayanihan. An example of this, a cathedral in Vican. Next, we have forts and churches in Cuyo, Agotaya, Palawan. This, we might say, areas in the Spanish period, especially in the 17th century and 18th century, were targeted by pirates coming from Mindanao. They would destroy, enslave, capture, and enslave the inhabitants in order to protect their flock and to protect themselves because many recollects no, in the missions of Palawan, Mindoro, Romblon, and Mindanao were either captured or captured for Ramsan or killed by the pirates. So in order to defend themselves, no, the recollect provincials and the superiors in Manila or superiors in Manila supported for the construction of forts and these forts are still existing today in Palawan, especially in Cuyo, Agotaya, and Culion. These were built during the time of Fray Juan de San Severo, who died in 1697. And these still, these, uh, we might say, churches inside the forts are still standing today. Now, among the Recoleto, we might say, missionaries who are, all, who are considered to be, we might say, we might say, defenders of, his, of their flock. Now, one of them was Father Agustin de San Pedro, also known as El Padre Capitan in Philippine history. Why? Because he became the terror of Moro pirates, especially in Mindanao and in Romblon. And he also, he trained his parishioners how to fight and defend themselves if they are attacked by the pirates. He was also responsible for the building of some forts in Mindanao and important forts in the island of Romblon, the main island, especially the Fort of St. Andre, which is still standing today and restored, and also the Fort in Banton Island. 
and they are still standing thanks to the efforts of the parishioners. In Las Piñas, when it was created as a town and then a parish, no, there was no parish priest. No? The first parish priest was Father Diego Serra, Serra and he was a recollect and an, an, org, and an a, a musician and an organ builder. Through the help of his parishioners, they were able to build the present church of Las Piñas and his famous, um, we might say, bamboo organ. He was parish priest of Las Piñas from 1797 to 1831. Not only that, Padre Diego Serra improved the economy of the town by promoting and improving the, the, the agriculture of the people, you know, the fishing industry, and the salt industry of Las Piñas. Then we have Father Mauricio Ferrero, assigned in Bacolod from 1871 to 1894. He was the town planner of Bacolod and responsible for the construction of the church, now a cathedral, the Cathedral of San Sebastian in Bacolod, the rectory, which is now the Episcopal Palace, and the town jail of Bacolod, which was later demolished in the 1990s to give way for a special, we would say, uh, a special build, uh, a peculiar um, a building in the in the city of Bacolod. These three important structures, this structure, the cathedral, the rectory, and the Episcopal and the town jail, you no, know, were the familiar landmarks of the Recoleto presence in Bacolod City. Now, in other words, the missionaries were also town planners. They planned where the church would stand, the plaza, the houses, and the places where the natives could work and till the soil. So they were just they were not just parish priests, but they were town planners. The basic town was sent that the center of the town was centered in the plaza where you can find the church, the rectory, the press, the residence of the parish priest, the market, the school, and of course the most important building representing the state is the uh, office of the build uh, the office build house or the building of the mayor, the ayuntamiento. Then in in Talisay, Negros Occidental, no, we had Father Fray Fernando Cuenca, parish priest of Talisay, Negros Occidental, from 1850 until his death in 1902. He was the builder of the town of Talisay and he was responsible for the improvement of the sugar industry of Negros. And reportedly, he built the first hydraulic press for crushing sugar. And that's the reason why Negros, during his time, was enjoying its economy due to the sugar industry that was improved by this missionary recollect priest, Father Fernando Cuenca. In San Juan Batangas, another effort made by a missionary and parish priest was Fray Celestino Yoldi. He was parish, parish priest of San Juan Batangas from 1892 to 1898. Because of the town that was near the seashore, he moved the town several kilometers inland in order to protect the town from flooding and he did this with pastoral zeal and many of the people followed the we might say instruction of their parish priests now san juan is now a city in batangas and it's a booming city and of course its economy was booming but this was done no by the efforts of the early recollect missionaries at that time before the philippine revolution he was Padre Celestino Yoldi. Now, of course, one of the things that we have to be reminded of is that one of the cultural contributions of the Recollects under the province of San Nicolas de Tolentino was the building of San Sebastian Church, which became the first basilica in the Philippines. It was raised as a basilica minor in 1898. And this church was made of steel. It was designed by engineer Genaro Palacios to withstand earthquakes. And it was the pre first prefabricated steel church in Southeast Asia. Thanks to the effort and help of engineer Genaro Palacios, this was, we might say, prefabricated in Belgium, transported in ship, and it was, we might, stay, we might say, we might say, reassembled in Quiapo today, no, in Plaza del Carmen. The church was also the first basilica in the Philippines, 
which houses the first image of Our Lady of Mount Carmel brought by the Recollects from Mexico in 1618. It was enthroned in this church on May 5, 1621. That's the reason why the San Sebastian community and the church no, is celebrating its 400 years of its foundation and the enthronement of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Not only that, as pastors of Seoul, they are the preservers of the of Filipino languages. The recollect missionaries, together with other missionaries from other orders, they did not destroy the languages of our people. Rather, they learned it and they preserved the languages. And they were responsible for the composition of dictionaries and grammar books in different Filipino languages. And what you see here is the Ensayo de Grammatica Hispano-Tagala by Toribio Mingelia. It is a grammar book in Tagalog, how to train and help Spanish speakers learn how to speak Tagalog. Not only that, other works of devotion, we might say character, were also composed by the recollect missionaries in the languages of the people they are saying Dala Teresa by Father Antonio Ubeda no? in Bohol and novenas were also composed in Spanish also and in the different uh, written in the we might say the native languages of the people what you see here is an example of the novena in honor of Saint Nicholas of Tolentino so they are promoting our languages in three categories grammar works of, we might say, devotion, and other works of literature, helping to uplift the morals of the people, written in the languages of the people whom they are serving. Now, what are the devotions that are still prominent, no? being recognized as recoleto devotions that are still being, we might say, observed by the Filipinos? As I mentioned before, the image of Our Lady of Mount Carmel de San Sebastian arrived here in the Philippines in 1618 and it was enthroned in San Sebastian Church when it was opened on May 25, 1621. It is the first image of Our Lady of Mount Carmel in the Philippines and the first confraternity of Our Lady of Mount Carmel with all its privileges given by the two generals of the Carmelites the, the Calced Carmelites in Rome and the Discalced Carmelites also in Rome gave permission to the recollects in San Sebastian to promote, to impose, and to create this. We might enroll the faithful in the confraternity of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Thus, when you talk about San Sebastian Church, it was also a sh the shrine, the only Carmel shrine in the Philippines, where the Brown Scapular was being imposed and promoted by the recollect missionaries here in the Philippines. Now, another devotion that is being revived today is the devotion to Nuestra Señora de la Salud, 16, that arrived in the, that was brought to the country in 1634. This is an image coming from Mexico, made in Mexico, and its Devotion was for the healing of people who were stricken with serious illness, especially during plague. And devotions were made also towards this Marian title by mothers who are expecting to deliver their children, asking the Blessed Mother's help, no? intercession for the safe delivery of their children. And this devotion was being observed before, when it arrived in 1634, Every second Friday of Lent, there was a great procession in her honor. And as time passed, the devotion was transferred in November. Another devotion that we Filipinos are, we might say, observing is the devotion to the Nuestro Señor Jesus Nazareno. This image was brought from Mexico and the confraternity was founded on or before 1650 because we discovered a document that the Holy Father from Rome granted plenary indulgences to those devotees to the to the members of the confraternity the cofradia of Jesus Nazareno and unfortunately the 
image that that was uh, being that was being what that was kept in intramuros was destroyed however another image in the 1700s were given to the church in Quiapo, Manila so that's why every January the trans translation was being observed commemorating the transfer of the image that was given by the recollects to Quiapo every January 9 in Quiapo. What do we call it? The, tra the transfer from Intramuros to Quiapo Church, which was being observed, which has been, which is being observed by the faithful every January 9. So the image in Quiapo was given by the recollects to the church and faithful of Quiapo. Now, one thing about the recollects, no, especially the province of San Nicolas de Tolentino, they promoted Filipino vocations to the to religious life and priesthood. The province accepted and promoted native vocations to the religious life and priestly life. The Talangpa sister, Dionysia and Cecilia, with the help of the Agustin Recollects of San Sebastian Convent, Manila, established the Agustinian Recollect Biaterio, catering to Filipino women vocations to religious life which would later flourish and became the Congregation of the Agustinian Recollect Sisters of the Philippines in 1970. For Filipino men, the acceptance was few in its first 300 years of the province's history. However, in the second half of the 20th century, more Filipino vocations were accepted and four seminaries were built to cater the growing vocations of Filipino youth joining the order now that's why the history of the Biateri de san sebastian thanks to the efforts of the recollects of san sebastian helped these two sisters establish the first biaterio in san sebastian de calumpang in 1725 it became only a congregation of diocesan right in 1929 and later in 1970 it became a congregation of pontifical right the daughters of the Talangpa sisters are now called the Agustin Recollect Sisters of the Philippines. So when I was mentioning that vocations of to the Recollects by was 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 growing, especially in the Philippines, seminaries had to be built. And what were the seminaries during uh, the time when the San Nicolas Province was in charge of the Philippines? Many. Uh, four important seminaries were open, namely the St. Thomas of Villano Minor Seminary, which was called before the Seminary, uh, Seminary Apostolico Menor, the Apostolic Minor Seminary, which was opened in the early 1950s. No? And uh, this is the Minor Seminary, which accepted candidates in, on, in the high school level. The retreat house that was opened in 1954 it was transformed into a philosophy seminary in 1966. It was called before Seminario Mayor Recoletos. Later, it was called Casisiaco Recoletos Seminary in Baguio City. This is the college seminary of the province at the time which was opened in 1966. Then the novitiate. No? The novitiate was moving from one place, no? one formation house. To, first, it was located in San Sebastian. Then it was transferred to Baguio. Then in the 1980s, it was transferred to Miranila, to the Recoletos, Recoletos, we might say, Formation Center. And finally, in 1991, it was transferred to Antipolo City, the St. Ezekiel Moreno Novitiate. The Novitiate is now, has its, has its own house today. It was, uh, we might, inaugurated in 1991. And finally, the Theologate, this is the final stage for the solemn profession and for the ordination to the priesthood preparing these young men to study theology was Recoletos Formation Center in Quezon City, which was inaugurated in 1985. Thus completing the cycle of seminary formation in the country, preparing young men to embrace the Augustinian Recollect life and serve the mother church. This was done before the birth of the province of St. Ezekiel Mori. It was done during that time under the ages of the province of St. Nicholas of Tolentine. Within this period, the Recoletos in the 19, we might say, 40s, opened their doors 
to formal education, the educational apostolate. In the provincial chapter of 1940, the province opened its doors officially to the educational apostolate and founded formal schools accredited by the American colonial government. And in 1941, Santo Tomas de Villanueva Institute in San Carlos City, Negros Occidental, and San Sebastian College Recoletos Manilas opened their doors to Filipino youths. Later, other schools were opened in the islands and two became universities, namely the University of Negros Occidental, Recoletos in Bacolod City, and the University of San Jose, Recoletos in Cebu City. So this is the early, we might say, pictures of the Santo Tomas de Villanueva Institute Recoletos. This is secondary education, which was open. It is the first formal school in the, uh, during the American period that was opened. The second one for the secondary and also uh, elementary and high school later, it will cater to college, was San Sebastian College, Manila, opened in 1941. Unfortunately, when World War II broke out in the Pacific, no, they had to close the, we might say, schools and reopen only in 1946. Then the Coleda San Jose Cebu was opened in the ninth, after World War II, and it became a new university in the 1980s. And in Bacolod, no, the University of Negros Occidental, which was brought by the, uh, which was bought by the Recoletos, the, its stocks, and it and it became the owner of the of the school belonging to the family of of Bacolod. Now, it became UNOR, known as University of Negros Occidental Recoletos in Bacolod City. So the educational apostolate was very recent, no, uh, accepted and opened by the only in the 1940s, and we are serving the nation by forming you the hearts and minds of the, its future Filipino citizens. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, no, the presence of the province of St. Nicholas of Tolent Tolentine would end only in 1998. So after several deliberations and we have been prepared for the separation from the other province, what happened in 1998? On November 28, 1998, during the 52nd general chapter held in Monachil, Granada, Spain, the province of St. Ezequiel Moreno was born from the mother province of San Nicolas of Tolentino or Tolentine. Thus, the spiritual missionary torch was passed by the mother province to her daughter province, comprising the Philippines, Taiwan, and Sierra Leone. Later, by 2019, Saipan and Indonesia were added. On this important occasion, this year 2021, the province of St. Ezekiel More celebrate with its mother province its titular patron, St. Nicholas of Tolentine, the first Augustinian friar formerly canonized saint whose shining star inspired the Augustinian recollect missionaries to carry the seed of the gospel and sow them in the hearts of men and women. Moreover, with the mother province, we give thanks to God for his infinite mercy and love that sustain us in the face of difficulties and adversities throughout these 400 years. May the star of St. Nicholas of Tonentine continue to shine from the heavens and accompany his sons as they endeavor to extend the whole world, the kingdom of God, into the hearts of all men and women of goodwill. And this mission is now being continued by the daughter province, Saint, the province of St. Ezekiel Moreno.